Welcome to Nursing School Explained and this video on urinary tract infections. Now, when we think about the urinary tract, we always have to distinguish between upper and lower urinary tract. This particular video will focus on lower urinary, urinary tract infections, meaning cystitis, bladder infection, or urethritis, ur uh, infections of the urethra. So if we review the anatomy here, this is all the urinary tract. So it contains the kidneys, the ureters that drain the, the urine into the bladder, the bladder itself that serves as a reservoir for storing the urine, and then the urethra that helps us eliminate. And the kidneys and ureters are considered the upper urinary tract, where the bladder and the urethra are the lower urinary tract. Now for pathophysiology, most of the urinary tract infections, or actually the majority, happen because there's the bacteria that enter through the urethra in the bladder from below. It is very unlikely that bacteria somewhere enter from the bloodstream and then come down from the kidney. So mostly it is the urethra that causes the bacteria to travel up. And because of that, females are at a higher risk than males because the urethra is just shorter and the travel distance that the bacteria has to cover is shorter to get up into the bladder. And also women between the ages of 18 and 30 years old are at a higher risk because generally they are higher sexually active and with any kind of um, friction and bacterial accumulation in the, the peritoneal area, that bacteria is likely to travel into the bladder. But other risk factors include patients who are diabetics because their urine typically contains more sugar. Um, poor hygiene, again, if the perineal area is not really clean, then the bacteria can travel. Estrogen deficiency, so women who are perimenopausal or postmenopausal, because estrogen also protects the bladder lining and the vaginal um, opening from bacteria to travel up into the urethra. And then males with prostate enlargement because then they are, have incomplete emptying and there might be some underlying pathology there with that enlarged prostate that puts them at an increased risk. So signs and symptoms of lower urinary tract infection or cystitis bladder infection, infection is this urea, meaning painful urination as well as frequency and urgency of urination, suprapubic pain because that bladder is going to be tender, there might be incomplete or at least a sensation of incomplete emptying again with that frequency urgency. There might be some hematuria, blood in the urine, whether that's visible, meaning gross hematuria, or just microscopic, detectable on a urine dipstick. And then pyuria, meaning pus in the urine, and that would be when we look at the sample and it's quite cloudy, we can see the bacteria um, in that sample. So for diagnostic tests, we certainly want to check a urinalysis. And typically, if it is positive for cystitis or lower UTI, we'll have positive white blood cells, nitrates, bacteria, and red blood cells, whether that's microscopic or actually visible red to the eye. And then certainly we want to send that urine sample off for a urine culture to determine what type of bacteria is causing the type of infection and very commonly we'll see E. coli in the urinary tract because of the proximity from the end of the urethra to also the rectum and if we have these risk factors the bacteria can travel into the bladder. So um, as with any infection treatment is antibiotics so you, if the patient is low risk um, and it's an uncomplicated UTI, a three-day course is usually sufficient and many times the selection is Bactrim or Cipro. Um, but if the patient is high risk, meaning they're pregnant, so there's a high risk there, they're diabetic or it's a male patient because it's unusual for male patients to have a urinary tract infection unless there's um, prostate enlargement or some other underlying conditions. So the, these would be considered high risk or complicated UTIs and then the course of antibiotic needs to be 7 to 10 days. And keep in mind that the spectrum and Cipro here a lot of times depends on the urine culture. So there's also a term called empiric treatment, meaning that we're going to treat the patient thinking that the most commonly um, uh, causing bacteria is E. coli and that Bactrim and Cipro usually work well. 
but of course we always need to check the urine culture to see what specific bacteria is causing this UTI in this particular patient and what antibiotics work for this specific bacteria. So when the urine culture comes back in about 48 hours, we want to make sure that we compare the urine culture result to whatever empiric antibiotic the physician or the provider might have prescribed so that we can change it because if it's resistant, then that's not going to help the patient at all. Other treatments, analgesics, a medication called pyridium is uh, very helpful in kind of soothing the symptoms of the dysuria frequency and urgency. And then it's important to um, encourage the patient to increase their fluids to kind of flush out any bacteria from that urinary tract. Now, if the urinary tract infection gets more complicated or has a complication, it can cause pyelonephritis, meaning that now the bacteria has traveled from the lower into that upper urinary tract, causing a kidney infection or it can even go to the extent of causing a renal abscess where now that bacteria accumulates in a spot in the kidney causing an abscess there. And mostly the cause of this is if the patient is not taking the full course of the antibiotic. Now usually after about 48 hours of being on an antibiotic, the patient will start to feel better. Sometimes they forget, sometimes they think they might not need it, but they might the antibiotics might have only killed a certain number or a certain percentage of the bacteria and the others remain now there are high likely there's a high likelihood that that bacteria will become resistant and that it'll become um, a complication by traveling up that urinary tract so for our nursing care of course we want to check that urinalysis and the culture to make sure and also compare the results once we get that culture result to whatever empiric antibiotic the patient might have been started on we want to check their vital signs that's always good practice to see if we have maybe any complications like pyelonephritis and i have a separate video about that we want to make sure the patient takes their antibiotics and analgesics appropriately another education point here is that this pyridium uh, will stain the urine kind of a, a bright orange or brownish color, which can cause some discoloration in the underwear. And it's also nice to tell the patient about it because now when they're going to the restroom, all of a sudden their urine has changed color. Maybe they, there would be a scary fact if you wouldn't warn them about that. We want to encourage the PO fluids to flush out the bacteria teach the patient about prevention. And since we know the risk factors are young females, we want to encourage them to clean themselves after sexual activity and to always wipe after urination or even defecation from front to back to minimize the chances of any kind of rectal bacteria traveling to the front and entering the urinary tract. And then of course, most importantly, we want to encourage the patient or teach them to complete the full course of the antibiotic to prevent any infection uh, abscess and pyelonephritis and then also to minimize the risk of resistant organisms. Thank you so much for watching this video on lower urinary tract infections. Also check out my other video where I go into the upper urinary tract infections meaning pyelonephritis kidney infection which is a little bit more complicated. Thanks for watching and see you soon.